Welcome back friends to the channel. Today's video was actually requested by you guys. We're going to be taking a look at and thoroughly testing the new Spyderco Tomahawk Axe. Is that what, I'm not sure exactly. It kind of bridges both gaps. It's beautiful. Uh, there's no question about that. The first thing, my initial impression, I, impression, I guess you'd have to ask me, did it give me the fizz when I took it out of the box? Yes and no. I'll tell you what did give me the fizz was this sheath. This is some of the most beautiful leather work I've ever seen. Whoever does Spyderco's leather work, um, they are to be commended. Commended. Of course, this is my one of my favorite knives of all time, the Spyderco Bushcraft. And at first, I did not like the sheath. I thought it was very ugly with the grommets in it. But after using it for many years, uh, I can attest that it is excellent. And the leather, the leather work on it is first rate. This even takes it to a new level. When you just look at the at the detail that went into this from the stitching, just little things like having the uh, catch that is not put on with a rivet like most people do, and it rotates around, it's never in the right position when you want to latch it. Look how it's sewn in there. And look at the buffing and the edging that they've done and matching the color almost perfectly. I mean, it is gorgeous. Not to mention the design, to be able to put it on a belt loop and to have a sheath that you can easily reinsert your axe or hawk into without taking it off or running the risk of cutting yourself it is a it's a really a brilliant design we're going to take down a couple of these ponderosas what we're going to i'll show you how to build is a simple rack that feeds it, it's a self-feeding campfire that will feed itself very simple to make so that you don't have to be there putting logs in it if you need to go out and do stuff well first off i'm unable to use it with a glove it's the handle is too slippery which is not ideal i like to wear gloves when it's cold We'll just have to work so hard that we don't get cold here. Boy, it's not a, not a great chopper. Having that leading edge uh, sticking out there is very weird. It doesn't, it, it's not handy for, for cutting with. Whoever came up with the idea that it was a good, or whoever thought it was a good idea to put an aluminum handle on a striking tool like this is out of their gourd. The reverberation, the vibration that comes into this handle is, I would say, borderlining on painful. The handle's too small. Way too small. We'll need four uprights. We'll just make them twice the axe width. Use your axe as a measuring tool. You can get some consistency like that now you typically all this stuff can be done with two tools usually an axe is a great complement to a uh, bush crafting or a forester's axe this is the silky big boy use the piece that you just cut as a pattern we're going to make four of these strip any limbs off there that you didn't already get to Put your point on your small end. You can just do a chisel point. It doesn't have to be fancy. It's just gonna be uh, a stake. If you can find a stump to chop on, makes a good work platform. This is a not, not a good chopper. That's a not a good, not a good shape for working, doing this type of work. This is why, guys, I tell you why, it's so important to buy your own stuff that you're gonna review. If this had been given, given to me, it's hard to be completely honest. You know, I have no dog in the fight. I paid for this. I, I don't care what Spyderco thinks or says. I can say, do what I want to. It's, it's important uh, to remain objective. That plastic covered handle is that's such a foolish thing to put on an ax like this. It's so slippery. My hand is cramping just from that little bit of work because I have to squeeze it so hard because it's just like grease. No texture on it or anything. The aluminum is flat, it's dead. It's impact, it's sending a lot of uh, impact into my elbow. It is not, I, I don't like it. Gather up our stays here. Now take a, Take and orient all the points towards you. So just cut that notch, just maybe, maybe in half inch or so. Take your hatchet, and then we're just gonna just chop. You want just a little, basically, a little ledge right there. Keep that ledge. 
depth is about the you know the bottom of your cut. You see that right there, like that. Now determine where your fire is going to be. Scrape down to mineral soil. Take your second stake here. Now that cut we made, make sure you rotate that to the back, like this here. And now the width of these needs to be less than a little bit less than your axe. Over here on this side, about an axe width. Use your axe as a rule of measurement. It gives you a consistency and a, a way to measure things real quickly. And drive it in the same, just a mirror image. Handle is terrible. It's too small. So small that I, I can't grip it very well. My hand's cramping up. It's, my fingers run into my hand and I can't squeeze it. It's, it's, uh, it's really awful. The shape of the handle for uh, in the reverse function of using the hammer with the curve in it uh, is uh, not conducive to, to hammering at all. You could use a little more weight in it too. This next step will be necessary only if you are working in an area that has really hard or rocky ground and you can't pound any stakes, but I'll show you just real quickly what you do. You'll cut, don't, don't be wasteful, use the rest of your tree. One tree can build this whole thing. These here will sharpen the small end uh, to a fine point. Now this part's necessary for those of you guys working in the stony ground. You'll need to support this uh, with your peg. So you'll have to kind of experiment what's the best shape, but that may be a tiny bit long but you want that to, to fit in there. And that's basically gonna be a support to prop that up. Typically you can just, you can kind of pound this in the ground, you know, get it close, make a small tent peg. If you're worried about it slipping out on you, tap that in there. And now you have a, a strong support there that's uh, never gonna fail on you. I don't feel, uh, I don't feel confident with it by my hand. Don't know why. I, I don't like the handle. It's the wrong shape for splitting kindling. It's got a, it's just too skinny. It's not a, it's not a kindling splitter. But look how deep. It's clear in there over an inch inside the wood and yet it still hasn't really got to the taper yet. There's no place for it to spread the, the wood. A, that's an important part of a, of a camp axe or butch crafting axe is to be a good wood splitter because that's that's going to be a lot of the work that you're doing. Uh, I forgot to mention on these days, make these out of green, out of green wood uh, that doesn't like to burn and it'll last longer for your fire. Now remember we measured that just a little bit shorter than our axe. We want to be full length of our axe here. Then we'll know that it will fit uh, inside of that. So you'll cut uh, about six of these guys per side, five or six, however many you can fit. Once you get your rounds cut, take your, start with your biggest ones, and we're just gonna roll them up here, like this, until we get to the top. Now you'll have to experiment a little bit with your angles. This is just quick and dirty, just to give you the concept here. But what this allows you to do is if you are by yourself and you don't have the ability to uh, make sure you get those nubs off there too. You don't have the ability to stay here and uh, babysit that fire, then uh, this will feed, uh, it's self-feeding. So you might have to go off and do other things and this will just come by you a little bit of time as you can see right there. Now as this burns down, these pieces will slide down into that V pattern and they'll keep that fire going. It's very effective, it works, works pretty good once you get it all at the angles all right. All right, guys, so what did we learn here? Well, uh, I'm, glad I, I'm glad I did this, spent some time with it uh, in a real world situation before I, I reviewed it, because had I just done a desktop, tabletop on this, um, I wouldn't know of how truly horrible it is. Um, I mean, I, I love Spyderco, and I'm not doing this to, to, to hurt Spyderco, but good grief, what were they thinking? I did a little, I looked into this a little bit and apparently it was designed by a German, a German historian. Now I don't know if he's a expert in bushcraft or such, but I would be, I would highly doubt that. This could not have possibly been made by someone who has used tools. This, I almost feel like I'm being lied to. This is kind of being marketed as 
I'm anyway, it's my opinion, my impression that marketed as something that would be good for the bushcrafter, be good for a guy who likes to go out and do fire making and, and work on those traditional skills. But it's, it's not good for that. As I said in my initial impression, this is maybe good for killing, maybe for cracking skulls or penetrating leather or, or, or steel helmets, but it is horrible uh, for, for bushcraft and forestry work. Um, the design of the, the angle um, is, is not conducive to chopping. It's a terrible at splitting. Um, the weight's okay. You know, I understand it's a small pack deal. I don't, I'm not gonna fault it for that. The hammer f function of it seemed to be fine, but the handle is terrible. I mean, leave it up to a German to overcomplicate something, to try to fix something that's not broken, which is a good wood hickory handle. A wood hickory handle has a spring and a liveliness into it that feels good, that actually works with the mechanics of the body, that enhances and actually helps you to chop harder. It's a, I mean, there's no better material that you to get a good grip on, whether it be cotton or leather gloves or wet hands. It's always going to be a sure grip that's not going to fail on you. Um, this plastic over the aluminum was a stupid idea. I mean, it's like a, it's like grease. It's like a, a it's so difficult to hold on to. The shape of it looks cool and all that, but it's not conducive to using. Um, it's too small. I can't get a, a grip on it. My hand's cramping up. The shape doesn't lend itself to using in the rear back position. There's no fawn's foot on it. There's no palm swell on it. It's just a greasy, slippery nightmare. Not to mention the aluminum transfers all of the shock from the, the ax head into my skeletal system, into my elbow, my, and it's a painful thing to use. Um, it's very disappointing. I, I mean, I understand the importance of marketing and making things that look really shiny and cool and, and the latest, greatest technologies and stuff. But man, sometimes you gotta go back to the old ways and you gotta respect the guys who over thousands and thousands of years have come up with designs that just really cannot be improved upon, that this is about as good as it gets right here. And it's expensive. I mean, this is just a little bit south of $300. I paid, I think, right around $200 for it. Um, and I would pretty much say that it's just unusable. It's, it's, I don't even want to be here down here doing it. I usually enjoy this, um, coming down here with you guys and, and sharing these things that I learned from my granddad. Um, I just want to leave because I don't want to use this thing anymore. Uh, it's that it's that bad. So it just seems like, I, I just can't imagine a guy that actually uses axes and, and understands them what's to, uh, the, what's required of, of a tool to work with the human body would design something like this. This to me is just marketing nonsense and should never have been made um, and I don't like it. So sorry Spyderco, but that's the truth. I do like your other stuff though. So that's it. Um, sorry guys, that's it is what it is. Thanks for watching. Um, let me know what you think in the comments if you've had any experience with these, but I, I wouldn't buy one unless you have more money than brains or are a little soft in the head as I'm fond of saying. But um, it's, not, it's not a good tool. It's an expensive tool as well. Thanks for watching. Keep us in your prayers. May God bless you and your families. And we'll see you guys on the next video.